Hello. Yes, it's me again, Dr. Jimmy, with my evil cat, Bob. Nice little kitty. And it's time to do the decrypting for cryptic comment, which was number, <clears throat> let's see, number four originally, and then it got removed. Uh, eraser, yes. And also to decrypt everything else as well, now that we've had our full sight reveal. What fun. Yes. The full sight reveal, in case you haven't checked, go check it as soon as you're done watching my video. Uh, yes, we now know quite a bit more about the street experiences and The Walking Dead House has been subtitled No Safe Haven. That's the full name of the house. Yes. Now, Eraser. Yes, back when I first began my cryptic comments, a different house had been planned than have we seen now. There had originally been planned to do a house based on the television series An American Horror Story. Yes, there would have been two movies, two house, and two, uh, two television series and a video game for our IPs this year. As it turns out, of course, they for some reason scrapped An American Horror Story and got another motion picture, Evil Dead, in its place. Thus, we replaced Eraser with Acrostic. Now, what was Eraser in reference to the American Horror Story? Well, it referred to a character from the first series, or first season, uh, which is now called American Horror Story uh, Murder House. And that one, of course, featured uh, the Rubber Man, seen throughout the entire season, uh, played by the young actor who was the ghost boy, based sort of on the Columbine uh, murderer, who ended up being the undead father of the Antichrist, amazingly enough. Uh, the Oh, did I spoil the ending if you didn't watch that? Well, you should have already seen that. You should have seen both series by now. At any rate, <coughs> <coughs> pardon me, the, uh, mm, the uh, rubber man, of course, wore a latex rubber suit, sort of a, a gimp suit, but uh, the idea was that rubber in British idiom is a term called for this little thing on the end of a pencil. This is called an eraser in America. In the United Kingdom it's called a rubber and it's used to rub out your incorrect writing so you can write incorrect ones. That's rubber. Uh, the person who figured that out was Heather Quackenbush, Mystique Freak, getting her fifth sharp cookie now. That's it. She got five out of nine cookies. My goodness. She's going to don't eat all the cookies at once because you've lost all that weight you don't want to put anything back on you know, eat the cooking sparingly over a several several days and uh, for that matter uh, be careful they're sharp <laughs> you know those Halloween treats sometimes they can be sharp if you get them from the wrong person you never eat anything on that has been opened and don't for heaven's sakes don't eat any apples that you get on Halloween on your trick-or-treatings no not a good idea we all know about that <laughs> but let's get back to eraser there was another possibility for eraser that no one really guessed to my knowledge it didn't really matter if they guessed it or not though because Heather had already figured it out uh, the other meaning goes to the second series Asylum there was a, a, a prevailing theme throughout that entire season about erasing your memories. If you recall, uh, Kit Walker, uh, good name Walker, that's a, by the way, did you catch that? That's a reference to the Phantom, the old uh, uh, comic strip character, uh, newspaper comic strips, and they made a movie um, a few years ago on the Phantom as well. The Ghost Who Walks, his secret identity was Kit Walker. And in case you didn't realize that, that was an homage. But uh, his memories were erased by aliens, of course, when he was abducted. Uh, we, had, uh, we had the memories erased of, uh, they attempted to erase the memories of both Lana at one point, and then later Judy, Sister Jude, who became just Judy when she got defrocked. Uh, erasing their memories through electroshock therapy, if you recall that those scenes in the movie, uh, I mean, in the TV program. So that was a recurring theme throughout it. So, so Eraser kind of fits both seasons, because I wasn't sure which season they were going to have for the house. We'll never know, perhaps, because uh, 
unless they do the house sometime in the future. But we have a third series called Coven starting in October, which I'm looking forward to. It's about witches and apparently set in New Orleans, at least the music would in the promos missing. And I saw an evil cat in the promos. A little cat, a little cat, barely seen in one scene, but if you look carefully you can see it in one of the promos. I always like it when the cat's involved in one of these. Always good to have cats in a horror movie or program. Yes, nice kitty. So that's what Eraser means. Now, what about my other cryptic comments? What could I have meant by Arboreal and Lumberjacks and alcohol? Well, interestingly enough, I selected those comments a long time ago for things that never are going to happen. I, I perhaps hoped in my heart of hearts that they might have, they might have happened after all, after they announced Walking Dead as the only street experience. But then I learned a little bit more about the street experiences, you see. We'd had all those rumors, season one in New York, season two on, on, in uh, Central Park, season three in Hollywood Boulevard. But Mike Aiello told us, don't believe everything you read. And I learned through my subversive sneakiness, there were actually five different scare zones in different areas. And uh, I had originally thought, oh, boy, Arboreal was originally going to mean the tree spirits uh, scares them that fit in with the whole evil takes root, e what evil has taken root concept. We might still see something like that at the front gate, by the way, but before you actually go in. But inside the park, it's all walking dead in the streets, but no tree spirits, but woodlands, woodlands. Oh, how, how wonderfully apt Arboreal could still be used, and so it was. That's what Arboreal was, the woodlands in Central Park. I think in Central Park is where that's going to be. Where else? Uh, and oh, I hope to God Michonne is in there. I really do. Uh, that'd be fun. All three seasons, it says. Characters from all three seasons in the woodlands. That doesn't sound like just zombies to me. Mm. Lumberjacks. Well, originally they were going to be uh, a chainsaw drill team related to the tree spirits, whether they were people fighting against them with chainsaws or rather tree spirits with chainsaws, which is what I'd heard. And that would be rather like, remember the Floronic Man from Swamp Thing so many years ago? Uh, when he, Jason Woodrew, when he picked up a chainsaw and was going to use it to carve humans in revenge for the way they had used them on trees? That was what I think they were planning on doing, something like that. Tree spirits with chainsaws going after those humans who had cut them down in the past. That's a clever idea. I hope that's what they had planned, and, but I don't know for a fact exactly what was the idea because that's what happens when things get scrapped. But lumberjacks still apply because we're going to have survivors with chainsaws. Uh, and we're also going to have chainsaws, I'm pretty sure, in clear, where we have the gladiatorial combat between survivors and zombies, remember, from season three. Then, of course, we have, <clears throat> I think that's on Hollywood Boulevard, but I'm not 100% sure yet where that's going to be located, but I do know a little bit about it, of course, otherwise I wouldn't have used those. Alcohol. Now, originally, there had been plans for Resident Evil street experience, not just the house, you see. And so alcohol was a, was a word I had originally going to use, thought about using for the Resident Evil house itself. How does alcohol fit in with Resident Evil? Well, what's another word for alcohol? Uh, liquor. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> but I thought Redfield would figure that out. And that's why I chose Christine instead. But alcohol also fits in with the, with the survivor's cap in the kids' own area because when you're out camping, you use alcohol lamps for illumination, don't you? Yes. So there we have it. That's what that was all about. Ah, uh, see, so that's why I used those, those three originally used for other ideas, but they turned out to fit nevertheless in what was going to happen. So that's what that was all about. Now something else to clear up. 
Remember some photographs I posted on my Tumblr? Images from all the IPs and houses and people figured that out. What no one really caught on though on those those eight images was they were in the exact same order as my cryptic comments. That was back when no one was figuring out Havoc, you see. And I thought maybe they'd get a clue and they would see that the little Mickey Mouse front was the first one, which was from American Werewolf Balloons. One. Two, Kevin was, of course, that clown from Cabin in the Woods. Three, of course, Pennywise, remember? That was what everyone was guessing incorrectly. The three, surname showed the, the boy with the word clear. Uh-huh, the word clear. Very strongly shown there. See, I was, I was getting at something, wasn't I? Yes, surname was the third one. The fourth one it re uh, was a uh, acrostic, and it showed the image from the Book of the Dead, the demon there. Uh, so... Five was Christine, and it showed a screen cap from Resident Evil. Six, Silencio showed the picture of uh, Rebecca Del Rio. Clearly, in case people hadn't figured out how to figure out uh, what the clue was for, for uh, La Llorona, that they would figure out Rebecca Del Rio from a Holland Drive. That's why I chose that picture. But the most important one was, <clears throat> uh, let's see, so, uh, seventh one, Simon, which no one was getting yet, and I showed the dog with the rifle and the helmet, a dog of war. I thought if anyone could figure this out, they might figure out that Simon had to be Havoc because of where it was located, the seventh picture of the seventh scripted comet. And eight, of course, was the picture of Giuseppe Zangara, on whom uh, Robert the Blade is, uh, is based uh, loosely. That was what that was all about. But no one, no one figured out that the sequence of the images matched the sequence of the cryptic comments, and thus they could figure out which one was which if they hadn't yet, which is what my plan was. Hoping someone was sharp enough, but no one gets a cookie for that one. Just like to don't get those other cookies for those other three comments. Sorry, I get to eat those cookies myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what fun. Ah, was there anything else that I need to clear up then? I, there might have been one other little clue I posted somewhere that I want to clear up. For some life of me, I can't seem to recall what it was. Oh well, I think I've cleared everything up then. Uh, there might be, if there's something else, I'll remember it later and I'll put it in a future video. But then this more or less clears up then, decrypting everything else on my cryptic comments for this year. So we have to now wait until next year before any more cryptic things come out from me. And you can probably expect it right around April 2nd. Of course on April 1st. Uh, it'll be redundant of course because on April 1st of next year I'll reveal the entire event of Halloween Horror Nights 14 for you completely and in full detail and so you'll know exactly what to see. So I really won't need to have any cryptic comments, but I'll do them anyway, starting April 2nd, most likely. <laughs> well, that's it for this year for crypticness. My next videos will likely go back to my old videos on the history of Universal Horror, beginning, of course, with my first video on the history of Universal Horror. Uh, no, not history of Universal that's my Tumblr project. My history of Halloween Horror Nights uh, for Halloween Horror Nights 19 ripped from the silver screen. Until then, ta-da, and I'll see you, maybe, if he, but you won't see me, unless I want you to, somewhere at the park this year for Halloween Horror Nights 23. Bye.